Culture, civilization, and technology have all evolved over many millennia to the point of exponential progress in the modern world. When one thinks about how far humanity has come and just how advanced we could possibly be in the future, what are we talking about when we say advanced? Are we referring to how much land we have colonized? Our population? Or perhaps how powerful our computers are? To measure how evolved a civilization has become, it is in fact not an easy question to answer. There are, however, some who have tried to tackle this question and have come up with measuring scales. Today, we will look at one of the more well-known of these scales, the Kardashev scale. When we look at human civilization, many would argue that we live in an advanced society. We have traveled to the moon, harnessed nuclear energy, and have built artificial minds almost capable of matching human intelligence. Certainly, these are hallmarks of a civilization that has made progress up the technology tree. But if by some chance tomorrow we contacted an alien civilization, could we scale ourselves against them? Nikolai Kardashev came up with the idea of measuring civilizations based on their energy usage potential in 1964. Under this model, while we may not understand all aspects of an alien civilization, energy capabilities should be a universal trait based on the laws of physics. Our artificial intelligence systems may use different architectures, moral systems may be unmeasurable, and different cultures may be unrecognizable, but energy consumption would be universal. This model of measuring alien and human civilizations was called the Kardashev scale and has three main levels to it, with some hypothetical extensions added later. Let's go through the levels. A type 1 civilization can harness all the energy that is on their planet coming from their star. On Earth, this is the equivalent of 2 times 10 to the power of 17 watts. To harness all the energy, technology not too far removed from what we have today would be needed. A civilization would need to utilize all mineral and ground sources of power, such as fossil fuels, uranium, and hydropower. Space-based solar power and renewable energy would make up most of the power harnessed, however. The capabilities of a Type 1 civilization would be much greater than our own. They would have complete control over the weather and would have solved many issues plaguing our society today, such as climate change and food security. To become a Type 2 civilization, however, would require much greater leaps in technology once again. A Type 2 civilization can harness all the energy output of their star. For our own star, this would be 4 times 10 to the power of 26 watts. To reach this scale, astro-engineering would be needed. Colossal projects such as building a Dyson Sphere, a stellar engine, or a Matryoshka brain would be required to capture all the energy outputted from a star. The capabilities of a Type 2 civilization would border on the most far out science fiction concepts today. Solar system sized computers could run gigantic and lifelike simulations. Countless entities with populations dwarfing our own could exist in such civilizations. Space travel would be significantly advanced, as well as colonization of the entire solar system at this stage. A Type 3 civilization is right at the top of the food chain in the traditional scale. It is a civilization that has harnessed the energy of an entire galaxy. At this scale, a civilization in the Milky Way is harnessing 4 times 10 to the power of 37 watts. The chances of reaching this far start to become speculative, as we would need to consider if traveling between the stars is actually possible, and if it is, is it something an advanced civilization would want to do? The capabilities of a Type 3 civilization would be godlike harnessing the power of black holes, living for billions of years, or even having the capability to destroy entire solar systems. If it is within the laws of physics, it is likely a Type 3 civilization would be capable of achieving whatever it sets its collective mind to. So, where is humanity on this scale? Currently, we do not even register on the scale. We are below Type 1, as we have not even mastered the energy output of the planet. Carl Sagan extended the scale using decimal places, adding a Type 0 on the list as a civilization that has not yet harnessed the power of a planet, but is a civilization nonetheless, such as humanity. We are currently somewhere around 0.7 and growing. Beyond Type 3, there are some hypothetical extensions to the scale as well. A Type 4 civilization would be capable of harnessing the power of galaxy clusters, making them immune to a galactic scale disaster. Beyond this, a Type 5 civilization would span the universe, and further than this, civilizations would be multiversal. 
Anything beyond a Type 3 civilization, however, is purely speculative and not grounded in conventional physics. If humanity manages to leave the Earth and grow outwards into space, we might find ourselves beginning to advance up the scale. With more energy at our disposal, we may find our capabilities will explode from planetary to stellar to galactic levels in terms of size and power. If we can do this, we may just secure our place in the universe, not for millennia, but perhaps for truly cosmic lengths of time. And as always, thanks for watching.